Hi, everyone. The President of the People's Republic of China is President Xi Jinping. Now, he is one of a number of presidents of China who have made significant changes in the evolution of China since the days of Mao Zedong. After Chairman Mao, there was Deng Xiaoping, who initiated a long-lasting liberalization of China, especially with respect to relations with the Western world. The liberalization continued through two subsequent administrations. Finally, the administration of President Xi Jinping started in 2013. And up through the early days of President Xi's first administration, relations between China and the West really warmed up. There was enormous interest on both sides of the other side. Schools in the U.S. started teaching Mandarin at an early age in much the same way that they normally teach Spanish and French. And at the college level, I remember the days when 10% of the entire undergraduate student body of my own university was from China. Some of my best students, honor students, were from China. Moreover, many American faculty, especially in the scientific areas such as physics, began to relocate to China to do their research because of the availability of research funds there. And American graduate students were going to China in large numbers, both to learn the language, but also to study things such as anthropology and even archaeology. Those were the real heydays of the warming relationship between China and the West. But then things began to change. The subjects, the primary target subjects, actions here at Focus One. I get the sensation that the primary target subject at Focus One is hoping to make some sort of deal or something like that. I get this vibe that he's kind of like a doomsday prepper, that he's kind of focused and angry about this perpetual state of violence, and I guess he he maybe thinks it's going to get worse in the sense that he does have this doomsday prepper attitude about himself with the deals that he's involved in with other subjects and with his, I guess you would call it his work life. Now remember, Farsight is non-political. We have no political ideological axe to grind. We stay neutral in earthly political matters. But we can still observe that a change took place in the way China interacted with the West, mostly beginning near the start of the second term of President Xi's administration. It is also very interesting from our perspective that the changes that happened in China reflect some of the things that we are observing with our other studies at Farsight with regard to how certain extraterrestrial civilizations govern themselves. In general, out there in the galaxy, we have seen that there appear to be two favored forms of governance. One is more of a top-down or authoritarian form of governance. Basically, the top leadership has a vision of how the society should be organized, and they force that vision to happen, which includes punishing lower-level people who want to do things differently. There is very little input from the masses. The only thing that really matters is that the masses do what they are told to do. And in most authoritarian societies, the masses do this willingly, even happily. But on the other hand, there are extraterrestrial societies who favor more of a free will approach to governance, which means that they generally have a more messy political situation and leaders have to spend a lot of time convincing people to go along with things. This inevitably leads to ongoing struggles to lead the society, all mixed together with compromises of all sorts, in order to get things done. Now, in those societies, there is lots of input from the masses, and the societies just have to live with it and enjoy the ongoing levels of unpredictability and sometimes chaos. Western forms of democracy here on Earth are more along those lines of organization, although they are not perfect in their embrace of free will by any means. There are still elites who control things in Western democracies. It's just not as rigid as with more authoritarian forms of government. Well, from our perspective here at Farsight, President Xi's administration in China seems to have drifted more in the direction of the authoritarian mode of governance. Now, I'm not saying this is a good thing or a bad thing. It is just what it is. Some might say that this became more visible during the long-lasting protests that occurred in Hong Kong in 2019 and 2020. Like I said, democracy is going to be messy, and that was a good example of how messy they can get. Messy is not bad. It is just different from the non-messy levels of control that you see in more authoritarian societies. Okay, so... I have the same subject, however, the setting is completely different. In Focus 2, I'm seeing this subject in a room that's spacious 
and very well decorated it looks like it looks like a very tasteful room but kind of has an aura of power there's kind of like tapestries on the wall remember in this video i am not characterizing authoritarian or democratic systems as good or bad but they are different approaches to governing and in general we note that societies do seem to organize themselves more or less in terms of one of those two ways of thinking China is no exception. Well, as President Xi has taken his society more in the direction of an authoritarian form of governance, the question of Taiwan has become increasingly important. Mainland China considers the island of Taiwan to be part of China, as in one country that should have only one government. How to treat Taiwan has long been a sensitive point in how Western nations interact with China. As of the recording of this video, Taiwan has a democratic form of government. It officially calls itself the Republic of China, and its president is Tsai Ing-wen, the first female president of Taiwan. She assumed office in 2016. Now, the trouble is that President Xi considers the issue of politically absorbing Taiwan into the mainland a high priority. President Xi has just begun his third term in office, and to be blunt, he is getting older. He is 69 years old as of the recording of this video, and while it is possible that he could remain president of China for another 10 years or more, it is likely that he would want to wrap up the Taiwan issue sooner rather than later. And military subjects in this focused gathering, all of it kind of has an intimidating look and feel about it. There's something intimidating about this. Yeah, sure, it's a crowd. You know, yeah, sure, it's like vehicles arranged in a specific formation. But there's an intimid it, it feels intimidating to me. President Xi is undoubtedly wondering what to do about Taiwan, and it seems certain that he is trying to learn lessons from the Russian experience in Ukraine, either to follow that example or to avoid that example or to learn from the Russian mistakes and try something different in some way. So, for people in the West, we are wondering what President Xi may be thinking. Moreover, we are wondering what he may attempt to do in real terms. This subject is very high on the chain of command, trusted by many, very powerful, but also not so trusted by some. Hide the truth. I'm getting the feeling, hide the truth. He hides the truth in some form. The subject seems to be getting told what to do by a different power, who, who seems to have control over him in some way. There's a conflict within himself. I'm going to call this different power, ele an, an, you know, an element. I'm going to give an element A. This element A is in physical form. However, she or they also ha uses a mind, has a mind ability like telepathy and communicates with him. It's like an inside job. We are trying to find out what President Xi is thinking about the Taiwan issue right now and what happens when in the future, or actually in a few of the futures, when he actually does various things. There's something that seems really sneaky about subject A here, uh, like he feels very confident about this goal that he wants to reach, but he doesn't want the subjects around him to really know everything about like how he's going to get to that goal. As with all of our projects at Farsight, there is a target. And the target for this project is President Xi Jinping of China at the moment described in various focuses related to the issue of Taiwan. Now, focus one is when President Xi is most focused on the Taiwan issue in his own mind in January 2023. This helps us understand his current thinking about the issue. Then, focus two is when President Xi is most focused on the Taiwan issue in his own mind in September 2023. It's good to know what is down the road a bit. Then. Focus three is when President Xi is most focused on the Taiwan issue in his own mind in 2024. Here we are moving further and further into the future to see both how President Xi's thinking may be changing as well as observing how things on the ground change as well. 
Then, focus four is when President Xi is most focused on the Taiwan issue in his own mind in January 2025, which is immediately after the next U.S. presidential election. Along the way of investigating these focuses, we also tune in to the President of Taiwan, who is currently President Tsai Ing-wen at the current time, but which will change in the future after the 2024 Taiwanese presidential election.